What's up guys, my name is Zach Chronicles here on this Destiny 2 video and today we're going to be talking about the Xur's location for February 8, 2019. If you can see here, the Xur is in his regular location in the tower. The reason that he's in the tower is because the DLCs cannot be put in the DLC locations, otherwise people uh, cannot actually go and get him. If you want to know, the Xur is going to be on the right side here in the hangar section behind uh, Peter Stormare, voice actor of uh, Dead Orbit Boy, which I think is named Halal or something. But anyways, you can go over here, find the Zerg. Probably going to be some people crowded around. Um, this ship always gets real close, and I don't really appreciate it. And the Zerg probably loves the fumes, but uh, he's a tentacle I monster anyway. But let's go ahead and take a look at the Zerg overall. Uh, his inventory kind of sucks, um, so really not too much to gawk at. And if this is all you care about, uh, this is all it is. But uh, let's go and talk about each individual item. First off, we have the Skyburner's Oath, a gun that came with the base game that has apparently like two ornaments. And I didn't even know that this was an ornament at all. That's a <laughs> weird looking ornament. Uh, but the basic idea behind this is that it's a... A special scout rifle. First off, this weapon lobs large explosive seeking slugs when fired from the hip. Uh, and when you're aiming down the sights, the slugs travel faster and straighter with higher damage at a lower fire rate. So it's lower fire rate, higher damage aiming sights, um, and then faster fire rate, lower damage, but also tracks target when you're not aiming down sights, which is my favorite part about it. And that was added uh, with a series of exotic buffs that they had uh, a while ago. Um, and it actually made this weapon really fun and very useful. However, scout rifles are still not good in either PvP or PvE, so uh, they haven't really gotten much out of it. And then secondly, for the Empire, this weapon is full auto, does extra damage to Cabal, and penetrates Fouling Shields. And I know what you're thinking. Leviathan, this should be very good for the Leviathan. Uh, no, uh, the Fouling Shields are really not that big of an issue. You just shoot the middle and then you shoot their head. It's, it's not worth the exotic slot when you can have an exotic heavy. Um, but uh, it was definitely considered for a while uh, that it might be good for the Leviathan, but it's it's really it's really not enough to warrant its use and its exotic slot. Next up, the Dragon Shadow exotic for the Hunter. Basically, dodging reloads all weapons, increases both movement and weapon handling speed for a brief time. I, I assume this buff is not for very long period of time, and it never seemed like this is very useful. They they did do an exotic buff with this. Uh, a while ago and they basically said this is your ninja armor i haven't used it since i haven't used it when i got it i literally have never used it so i i don't know what it's like uh, but the idea is supposed to be like as you start dodging you start to become an absolute ninja and just start going as fast as possible jumping as high as possible but i don't really find that that's really that useful unless it's like twice as fast because maybe a 10 percent increases which is probably what it is is really not good enough but you're gonna have to tell me about this one because i really don't use it ever as far as the roll goes, unflinching Telesto aim or Yoden aim is really nice. Uh, unflinching kinetic aim is also really nice. Um, and then lastly, third column with the special ammo on kill is the best thing you can have in this column for both PvE and PvP. This column just sucks on all chess beats. First time this ornament or this shader has ever been useful. Next up for the Warlocks, the Sunbracers, one of my favorite Warlock exotics that I honestly don't use enough. Uh, increases the duration of solar grenades, which is really nice, my favorite type of grenades. Solar melee kills grant unlimited solar energy for a brief period of time. Basically, you get a solar melee kill and then you chuck like five to six solar grenades in that time and it's so fun. You literally chuck a nade, you have the next nade. Chuck a nade, you have the next nade. Chuck a nade, you have the next nade. And it works very, very good with the Dawnblade Attunement of Sky of Subclass Tree Node. Basically, if you're getting mid-air kills, you get your, I think, grenade and melee energy charged back really quickly, and then you go for the melee kill and get that melee charge kill, and then you jump in there and you just start chucking nades. Those are giving you mid-air kills, and you just keep cycling this back and forth, making it an incredibly powerful exotic, and it's really fun to use, especially on the non-end game activities, because, you know, you can kill people with melees very easily. I mean, it's just super fun. Uh, impact induction, usually very good for uh, melee, uh, for arm exotics. However, in this one, I would have preferred the other one uh, where grenade damage increases your melee uh, attack, recharge, and cooldown or whatever. But either way, this is still a decent one for this. Uh, on top of that, you've got your Telesto reloader, you've got your hand cannon loader, and then you've obviously got your sniper and machine gun scavenger, which are pretty much A slash S tier. Uh, third columns for arm pieces. And lastly, the Titan Exotic called Worm God Crest, which I think is guaranteed to be given to you at the end of the Warmind campaign if you are on your Titan. So you probably already have this if you have a Titan through the Warmind campaign. But basically, melee kills increase melee damage for a period of time, and additional kills extend the duration increase its effects. Now, uh, it says additional kills. It does not say additional melee kills. It also says it increases the duration and its effects. Now, does that mean you can just get infinite damage uh, for the melee? Does that mean you just get infinite length for it if you just keep getting kills? That seems like it could be extremely powerful melee, but in the end, it's still melee, and melee 
is dangerous and it's gonna get you a kill. Honestly, there's a lot more, a lot better uh, Titan exotics for melees, insurmountable skull fort for all of your uh, arc needs. Um, the Synthoseps also has increased amounts of damage, which actually can give you pretty good damage with Serana buff. It also gives you better melee lunge range and super damage. It's just a superior exotic all over. And as far as roll goes, it's the same as the all every single other arm exotic from the Zerf. You got your Telesto Reloader, you got your Hand Cannon, Impact Induction works really well with this exotic because it's all about melee. And then the third column with this Sniper and Machine Gun Scavenger. Every single arm piece is the same thing. Every chest piece has the same role. Uh, that's what I've noticed from these third. But that is pretty much it. That is the, uh, the Zerf for you. Again, if you want to get easier Nightfalls and higher scoring Nightfalls, pick up the Five of Swords. And if you want to get an exotic from before Forsaken that you do not have, you can pick up a Faded Engram. If you have them all, ignore this. It is not useful. Anyways, that is the video for guys today. Hope you guys did enjoy. That's the Zerd. This is the ship that will not seem to leave us alone. And that's the end of the video. And I will see you guys on the next one.